Before you just grab the POB and close the video, let me say two quick things. Number one, this build was made by Rutu, he came up with the idea and he made the endgame version of it. All I did was do the early leveling and help to improve the swap a little bit. And now I'm making the guide because I know Rutu isn't gonna make one. Number two, this build is actually quite complicated and unless you are 100% convinced you can pull it off by yourself, you should probably watch this video. The basic premise of this build is to turn detonate dead from a 2 button skill into 1 button. Since DD was one of the very few meta skills that didn't actually get nerf dispatched, the relative strength of this build compared to others went up a lot. To do this, we use cast on crit setup on Inquisitor to not only use our DD but also the desecret that is responsible for creating the corpses for us to detonate. This turns a skill that people usually consider clunky into a one button build and all you have to do is click somewhere in the direction of monsters and all the spells get cast for you. This might finally be the time where DD becomes a meta in softcore, as it probably should have been for a few leagues by now. I wouldn't say this build particularly excels at anything, but it is very good for any content in this game. Even if you probably can find builds that are better in the individual categories, this is an example of truly well-rounded beast. This POV doesn't only have the endgame version of the build, but also the early progression while leveling, the setup for when you swap to cast on crit in early maps, and a mid-game version of the build. To gain access to all these versions, you have to change the skill tree, the gear, and the skill set. Based on what you are looking for, make sure they always match, otherwise you are not gonna get the correct results. When it comes to leveling, we just play Rolling Magma into Armageddon Brand Cremation which has been the best leveling caster build for the last few years. And although the tree that we use doesn't have as many damage points as usual, it's still extremely smooth and easy to level. I've done a full campaign run with this leveling setup, and you can find the link to that run in the description of this video. Also, make sure to check the notes sections in this POB. If you aren't completely sure on what to do while leveling, this should help you a great deal. There are two difficult parts for playing this build, and they both happen at the end of the campaign. First, you have to get everything you need for your swap, and then actually execute the swap to cast on grid properly. The main goal of this video is to walk you through that process in a way that is gonna set you up for success rather than failure. You'll have to farm lab on League Star to acquire your gems since I wouldn't expect them to be cheap due to the popularity of Chain Reaction DD, not only for this build but also for the Necro version. I recommend farming Merciless Labs for the gem, as it is just way faster on average, but if your build is somehow too brick to consistently do it fast, which it shouldn't be, but I've seen some wild stuff when people level on leak start, you can do normal lap instead, but it is definitely a lot worse. When you are farming lap, you are primarily looking for free crafts on the divine pond. The most common one that you can find in every lap allows you to transfer a gem into a transfigured gem of the same color. You can use any gem for this, ideally if you have some with quality already as it retains it after transforming, but it doesn't matter too much. The next craft adds quality to our gems, the priority here is Assassin's Mark because it allows us to generate power charges, and Lancing Steel of Spraying if you already have it because it adds extra projectiles to the skill, allowing the cast on grip procreate to be more consistent. The last craft is the big jackpot that you are looking for. It transfers a gem into a transfigured version of itself, for Lancing Steel it guarantees our Lancing Steel of Spraying, and for DD it's a 50-50 chance to be freed from this never-ending prison. Keep in mind that while you are doing this, you will be getting other gems that you can potentially sell. It is hard to predict which ones will be expensive, but I would definitely expect at least Blink Arrow and Mirror Arrow gems to be quite pricey, as well as Frenzy of Onslaught, the new Tornado, or Poisonous Concoction to have some value. The list of things you need before you are allowed to swap is right here in the notes section, and I highly discourage actually swapping before you have all of them. You need both of your Transfigured Gem, Lensing Seal Spraying, and Detonated of Chain Reaction. The Lensing Seal Spraying and Assassin's Mark should be 20 quality. You need to level your Desecrate while you do all of this, it should be at least level 15. You absolutely need a 5 link, this build does not function on a 4 link. Don't try to swap on a 4 link, it will not work without increased crit strikes. Don't try it. I've tried it and it's just straight up not good enough. You also need a Diamond Flask with chance to gain Flask Charge when you deal a critical strike. You can just alter all this on a diamond fast that you get from quests during the campaign. And lastly, you need a weapon with increased critical strike chance and increased attack speed roll on a decent sword base. You are looking for 7.5% crit or higher and 1.6 attacks per second or higher, ideally on a base that has critical strike multiplier as the implicit. 
To give you an idea of what kind of sort you need before you swap, there's one in the swap POB. It's tier 2% crit chance and crafted attack speed. Uh, you can alter all this, you can pick this off the ground, you can buy this on trade. It shouldn't be hard to obtain something similar. Let's take a look at bases that are actually good enough to be considered for this build. So let's start by crit. Anti Crapier, too slow, too slow, all these are too slow. Battered Foil, basically the best base. Small Sword, I would try to avoid unless you really need to use one. Like if you find a good one with crit chance, crit multi maybe, and then you craft attack speed, that's good enough. But I would try to avoid the ones that have uh, non global crit multi as the implicit. Uh, Burnished Foil, good enough. Same thing, doesn't have the implicit, good enough. Doesn't have implicit. And now we are getting to the territory of like try to avoid unless it draws really well. Right? So basically the TLDR is tempered foil, but the problem here is the dexterity. Burnished foil, really good, and then buttered foil is the best base. Another thing you absolutely need to do is put a high HP corpse in your desecrate pool, otherwise you are just losing half your damage for no reason. To do this, go to Cathedral Rooftop and desecrate until you spawn a corpse called Kitava Herald and then raise it with Ray Spectre Gem. Uh, I don't think we got one here, so let's do it again. And you do this until you get Kitava Herald. Then you just raise it, like this. Now you can unsocket your Spectre Gem, but you should keep it for leveling for later as we will need a level 20 later on. Why do we need it for later? Because we will be adding 4 more Spectres into our Desecrate Pool by using 2 Midnight Bargains and a Void Eye Ring socketed by a level 20 Spectre Gem. And we're gonna go around the world collecting high HP Spectres. You should already have Kitava Herald, you want to go to Vastery Desert and get Sandstorm Slave, you want to go to Lower Prison in Act 6 and get uh, Rattling Condemned, and then you have to go to Solaris 2 in Act 3 and get Auric Colossus and Auric Champion. Those are a little different because you actually have to spawn them, you cannot desecrate them. So you go there, you spawn it, you kill it, then you raise it and you should be fine. It's a little tedious, but it's most certainly worth it. Another thing that's very simple, yet also very easy to mess up, is the wrong order of your gems on your body armor. What you need to do, is you need to put your desecrate in front of your detonate dead, otherwise they'll be broken in the wrong order and while clearing it is gonna feel very clunky. So what you do is you read the gems from top left, and you go along the links, and you make sure that desecrate procs before detonate dead. This is our skill tree when we are swapping to custom crit, around level 70 or a bit later, depending on where we get our gems. There's nothing too special about this skill tree, but I still want to point out a few things. First, we have a bunch of strength notes that we technically don't need, but they give us crit from Righteous Providence from Inquisitor, so they are very well worth taking. Obviously, you go Eldritch Battery to solve your mana issues. You don't go MOM early because you don't have enough ES usually. Uh, grab a small spell leech note because it is a super efficient point and you don't really have other sources of spell leech early. You need accuracy early on because we don't have hits can be evaded weapon yet. So we grab the accuracy cluster with crit and the accuracy mastery for accuracy per level. This should be more than enough along with level 10, 11, 12 precision, whatever your mana allows you to use. And you should be fine. We grab a mark cluster to get a frenzy on hit on marked enemies. And we grab a suppression cluster for suppression lucky to protect us in early maps. And a crit cluster, which is one of the most important things. And that is this critical strike mastery that gives us critical strike chance against enemies that are on full life. Which basically ensures that our clear feels smooth early on even with lower crit than you would usually expect. While you're level between level 70 and 90, what you wanna do is grab written in blood, grab instinct for more suppression, grab throat seeker with the mastery for increased effect of non-damaging elements with crits. And if you don't have hits can be evaded yet, you also wanna grab accurate for more accuracy. Once you get hits can be evaded, it allows you to drop the accuracy wheels and drop precision for vitality. And if you have more than 1000 ES by now, you can also click mind over matter, as uh, you should have more than enough recovery to use it now without it hindering your build. Lastly, I wanna quickly go over the gem setup just to highlight a few things, so let's go over it. Our lancing seal of spraying is linked to cast on crit. Desecrate and Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction. As I mentioned previously, Desecrate needs to be before Detonate Dead. And Increase Crit Strikes, this is not negotiable, you always have to have this on your 5 link. Increase Crit Damage is your 6 link if you somehow have a 6 link early. Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, Assassin's Mark, Mark on Hit. This is probably gonna be in your helmet because it's ES Evasion, so this should work very nicely. Both of your gloves and boots should probably be Armor Evasion because uh, 
the amount of red sockets you actually need. Haste or Valhaste, depending on what you prefer. Divine Blessing, Inspiration and Increase Duration for some quality of life there, so you don't have to spam it. And the other item will have Determination and the new support Call to Arms linked to Enduring Cry and Infernal Cry. Enduring Cry will give us some extra recovery and Endurance Charges. And Infernal Cry will cover enemies in Edge, which will give us more single target damage. As well as sometimes it will cause explosions while clearing, but those are not super noticeable. In our weapon we will have Grace, Defines Banner Precision, this should be really easy to color as we are using a sword. Make sure you level your precision as much as your mana allows you to do because it gives accuracy and extra crit. And we don't really need mana. Cast when damage taken and Molten Shell at level 1 and 10 respectively to make sure they progress as often as possible. And then either Flame Dash or Frost Blink depending on which one you prefer. There's no like clear choice, a lot of people prefer Frost Blink because you can use it while you are using Lensing Steel. I personally like Flame Dash more, but just use whichever one suits you more. The gear at this stage is extremely primitive, I already showed the weapon is just crit chance with crafted attack speed on a good base. Uh, shield is just life resist, ideally on a suppression base. ES evasion is definitely the way to go because we need as much ES as possible early since it is pretty mana intensive. Three Dragons allows our fire damage to shock instead of uh, ignite. Ignite basically doesn't do anything on this build. But Shock gives us around 20 to 30 damage while clearing, so it's super strong. Uh, 5 link body armor, this doesn't have to be Sadist Gar, basically any ES evasion on like a decent base will do. And in case of like really, really dire circumstances, you can also use uh, pure ES or armor ES. But you should really try to get a decent ES evasion base 5 link. Gloves, don't really need to have anything. Uh, same for boots, just get move speed resist. Carnage Heart Amulet is actually extremely good for this build. As attributes basically give us crit chance due to Inquisitor, we need uh, dexterity for grace and whatnot. So all the attributes are not wasted. Uh, you can go for an early beef anoint, which is basically 30% increased crit chance for the most common alls ever. You probably need to do like two Cassias, 15 orders or up to 20, just solid stats. And increased damage while leeching is actually active quite a lot. Uh, nothing special on ranks, just Rife, Resist, Chaos Resist, whatever you can get. Same for belt, ideally get the heavy belt because again, strength equals crit chance. When it comes to flask, there's not much to mention. You wanna use granite, silver, quicksilver from your quest rewards. But I will mention one more time, on your diamond flask you wanna have this modifier that gives you a chance to gain a flask charge when you deal a critical strike. This is super important and without this it's gonna be difficult to sustain this flask in early mapping since we like no one's that fast and there's not that many mobs early on. So just make sure to actually get that. Our defenses are actually surprisingly high for this stage of a cast on crit belt. As we are running the holy trinity of grace, determination, defiance banner, you can see we have a decent evasion, decent armor. We also have decent suppression with suppression lucky. And uh, if you can get some chaos threats, this build is just very solid as you enter maps. And you shouldn't really be dying at all. Now that the early game setup is done, let's take a look at the mid game setup a little closer. So our weapon is still crit chance and attack speed, but it now also has hits can be evaded craft. This craft is specifically available through Vagan on Betrayal board. And uh, it costs free exalt, so you want to make sure the weapon is at least decent. You can craft this with loading essences, you can craft this with zeal essences, or just buy it on the trade side if it's available. Our shield, we just look for life and fire damage. If you don't like double damage while focus, you can just grab normal double damage, it's completely fine. You will probably have to settle for lower fire damage early, but that's fine. Helmet, still free dragons, this is not gonna change all the way until we get Yoke of Suffering. Body armor, it's just high ES evasion, some suppression and uh, determination effect and aura effect. For gloves, the important mod is fire damage leeches live. And on the actual explicits, you wanna have life resist, life regen, life regen raid or suppression. Doesn't really matter too much. Similar for boots, you want to have brittle ground, implicit, and otherwise the stats remain the same, except obviously you want movement speed on the implicit. On amulet, we are looking for crit multi and live AoE crafted, nothing special there. Anoint now is Ash Force and Storm, which is just generally the elemental anoint that most people go for. Gifts from the above, this is actually very strong and underrated unique ring that allows the Inquisitor Sanctuary node to give you the extra bonus because it's very difficult to actually spawn Consecrated Ground below enemies. If you are not using Zealotry, this ring enables that completely and it's super strong for that. 
The other ring is nothing special, it's just life resist. We don't actually need the minus mana cost craft, you could just craft damage here instead. If you want to, it all depends on how you feel about your ES pool and uh, how it feels to play. Uh, for jewels, you're just looking for crit multi, life, fire damage, AoE damage, the usual stuff. And then for a unique jewel, we actually use Red Dream. This gives us 10% fire damage as extra chaos damage, which is just 6-7% uh, more damage. And because we have uh, Fire Walker in range, this also gives us a chance to generate Endurance Charges on kill. Lastly, but definitely not least, uh, I wanna talk about the belt. So this belt uses uh, Unveiled Modifier for cooldown recovery rate. You can technically use Crafted as long as you have an Implicit on boost that gives you cooldown recovery rate as well. You wanna hit 14 cooldown recovery rate in total at this stage to hit the next threshold for cast on crit uh, proc rate. Speaking of cast on crit trigger rate, the only two numbers you really need to know are 14% increase cooldown recovery rate and 52% increase. In our mid game POB, we just reach 14% through the unveiled belt. You can also craft it on the belt and combine it with boot implicit for increased cooldown recovery rate or an abyss mod. But the abyss mod actually requires very high level abyss jewels, so I would recommend just buying a belt that has the unveiled mod with 14% or higher. The end game POB actually does reach 52%, but you need a vacant cast on crit for that, so I wouldn't worry about it early at all. Usually, for cast on crit builds, the attack rate is actually very important. But on this build, if your attack rate is not balanced perfectly, you don't actually lose that much because of how often Lensing Steel actually hits. These uh, attack rate numbers you want to compare to your effective trigger rate in POB. Early on, uh, on the swap POB, you want to be approaching 6. Here in the mid game POB, we want to be approaching 7,457, which, as you can see, we have 7,42, which is really good, right? And then in the end game POB, you want to be close to 10. You should check this yourself uh, when you are actually buying upgrades for your weapon. Just import the weapon and check what the effective trigger rate is. POB does the math for you. We finally got to the end game version of the build. I'm not gonna go over every item, I just wanna highlight the stats. This is definitely a high budget version. I'm not sure what it's gonna cost next week. If it's popular, it might actually be quite expensive. But it's still good to have stuff to aim for as you play the build, right? As you can see, we have 30 mil DPS, but that's not actually our full DPS. We also have the spell damage part of DD, which is under the 5 mil. So the damage is more than enough to do any content in the game on this build. Uh, 24k armor, 25k evasion, decent life pool with EBMOM. It's like 6.2, 6.3k effective. And just generally pretty good effective HP pool with decent max hits. Not nothing to scoff up. I mean, honestly, the build just doesn't have a big weakness. Obviously, you can get one shot by like a Shaper Slam, but just don't tank it, just dodge that, and nothing else should really one shot you. Recovery on this build is also pretty insane. We have 1000 life regen, 1000 ES regen, we have a little bit of leech for both life and ES, and we can use a life gain on the Watcher side with Vitality to get even more recovery there. Now we get to the one truly unfortunate and messed up part about this build. Sadly, I find MTX mandatory to play this build. I use Stitch in the Secret, you can also use Void apparently, and I use Void Detonate Dead. Without these two, you actually lose like 40%, for some PCs apparently even 50% of your FPS. And uh, it's just not a good experience, and I really wish this wasn't the case, but... I'm sure GGG isn't doing this on purpose, but it always sucks when the game feels like pay to win, where you cannot play certain skills without the MTX. I really hope they end up fixing this, but... As it is right now, I highly recommend buying these if you are going to play the build, otherwise your experience is just going to be a lot worse. As my closing thoughts, I just want to give a little bit of encouragement and compassion to people who will be suffering in lab on Leakstar trying to get this build up and going. I understand that it sucks, the prospect of sitting in Merc Lab for 2-3 hours on Leakstar, trying to get your gems, especially once you start getting unlucky. But all I can say is that I think this build is actually well worth it and it is one of the best all-around league starters we have had in recent leagues. And I can't really think of anything that's even remotely close to this when it comes to comfort and actual performance. One of my captors felt no emotion.
crucible that stretches the sanity of the mine. You might be thinking to yourself, there's nothing special about this build. I mean, that looked okay, but not insane, right? Well, let me show you the gear I did this with. My weapon has two modes and a crafted mod. My shield basically only has life. Nothing else that there does anything. Three dragons. Carnage heart with a beef allocated. A ring that has two resists and a life crafted. Ring that has one resist and life. Body armor that has like two stats and crafted evasion ES. Uh, gloves with triple rest and 30 life, I guess. Belt with some resist. And boots with some resist. And all this with a level 19 gem. I mean, I think it's pretty good for that. And as you can see in the POB numbers, this build scales quite well. In the gear I just showed you, you can just blast through influence tier 16s. I've done either on it, Exar, Cortex. I've done 50 plus quantity Elder Slayers, Formed, Twisted, most of all of that Deathless. And there's very few reasons to not actually start this build. The biggest one would be that you will be stuck in Lab Jail on Leakstar, but after that, the build is super good. Highly recommend one of the best league starters that we have ever had, not just this league. If you have any questions that weren't answered in this video, just leave them in the comments and I will try to answer as many of them as possible before the league starts. And after that, you can just come to my Twitch chat and ask there, or Ruth to Twitch chat if he is going to be playing the build as well. That's going to be everything from me today. Have a good one, everyone. Bye bye.